Hey everyone, it's Alex the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome back to my chronological Marvel Cinematic Universe recap. And we're at part 19, talking about the 20th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now that's confusing right there. So this movie came out only nine months ago, July of 2018. And out of the three MCU films that came out that year, Black Panther, Infinity War, and this, this is the one that everyone can agree is not the best one. Whether you like this more than the first Ant-Man, or you don't like it as much as the first Ant-Man, or if you don't like it at all, that's cool. I think everyone's in agreement that this is not one of Marvel's best. For me, when I first saw this movie, I thought it was better than the first Ant-Man. And having rewatched this movie and prepped for Endgame, I still feel the same way. Granted, my experience of seeing it again was a lot better than when I saw it in the theater because I had to go to the restroom so bad. I was holding it in throughout the entire movie. I'm like, I will be damned if I walk out of this movie and miss something. If you've seen the first Ant-Man, then you've pretty much seen Ant-Man and the Wasp because the tone's the same, a lot of the characters from the first movie are back, the humor is very much the same. Not laugh out loud funny, but definitely chuckle worthy throughout most of the film. There are a few scenes in this movie that made me laugh hard, and I had a better experience watching this movie than I did with the first Ant-Man just because I no longer had that thought of, what would this movie have been like if Edgar Wright made it? I think they get a lot more creative on how they handle the shrinking technology. I mean, this time they now enlarge stuff. Ever since we got the introduction to Giant Man in Civil War, they blow stuff up a lot more, as in like make it grow bigger, and it's just as funny. There is a funny gag throughout this movie involving Scott Lang's new suit, where it just keeps malfunctioning and he keeps shrinking halfway or growing halfway. It's amusing, and I think the funniest scene involving this joke is in the school. Although, I gotta say, re-watching this movie again, I noticed one pretty big plot hole with that sequence. When Scott Lang's suit malfunctions and he's bigger or smaller than he usually is, sometimes the helmet comes off. Now, it's my understanding that if the helmet is off when you're big or small, then that's not good. And there's even a line when Hope and Scott are driving in a Hot Wheels car where Hope says that the doors won't open while the system's engaged. And for that sequence in the school to kind of ignore that rule, it, it, it bugged me, but I still got some laughs out of that sequence. I just wish that somebody put a little more effort into the continuity with that scene. Your two leads in this movie are Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly as Scott Lang, aka Ant-Man, and Hope Van Dyme as the Wasp. And this is another reason why I always like this movie over the first Ant-Man, is because whenever it comes to these two characters, I can't imagine one without the other. And I love how this movie establishes that no one's anyone's sidekick. They're both partners. Even though I think most of the movie's story is focused on Hope. If anything, Scott's more of a supporting character to Hope. But still, the action scenes are great, the teamwork and camaraderie between the two of them in the suits are great, and even when Hope's fighting on her own, those action scenes are the big highlights for me. And there were times where I was kind of bummed whenever Hope wasn't doing anything in the Wasp suit. And of course, Michael Douglas is still good as Dr. Hank Pym. Michael Pena is good, but I don't think he's as funny as he was in the first movie. Michelle Pfeiffer as Janet Van Dyme is such perfect casting and she's great for the little time she's in the movie. Lawrence Fishburne's really good. You have a lot of good actors in this movie. One of the issues that I do have with this movie are the villains. With Ghost, she's not really a villain. She's been marketed throughout most of this movie as the main villain, but she doesn't really have any evil plan. She doesn't really want to get involved with fighting Ant-Man and the Wasp. She just wants to try to cure this condition she has. The only thing is that her tactics on trying to cure herself are pretty aggressive, so that's why she comes across as a villain. The real villain of the movie is Walton Goggins, but he just feels very random and doesn't really feed into the main plot of the film. At least Ghost does actually play into the film's plot by the end, whereas Walton Goggins' character really doesn't. I don't even remember his character's name. On the whole, I don't have much else to say about Ant-Man and the Wasp. What was good about the first Ant-Man movie is better here, and what wasn't so strong in the first movie is just more the same in this one. But still, this movie is a lot of fun. It's very lighthearted. It's the very movie that the Marvel Cinematic Universe needed after Infinity War. And I think this movie often gets judged unfairly. It's good, but it's definitely not great. Like the first Ant-Man, it kind of feels like a filler movie, 
But also, like with the first Ant-Man, this movie does introduce some new characters that are important to the future, and as well as the Quantum Realm, which is going to play a huge part in Endgame. So it's really difficult to say that you should skip these movies altogether, because outside of them being important to future events, they're very fun. Stan Lee's cameo in this movie was actually his very last cameo in the MCU while he was still alive. There was the posthumous cameo in Captain Marvel and his final cameo coming up in Endgame. But this one is amusing. Basically, he's just an old man in San Francisco is trying to unlock his car, but it accidentally gets shrunk by Hope, and Stan Lee just drops his keys and goes, well... The 60s were fun, but now I'm paying for it. And there's actually a lot of different takes of this scene where he says different stuff. You can find it on the Blu-ray for Ant-Man and the Wasp, but my favorite is probably, Oh no, I just stole this car. The mid credit stinger for me is honestly the best part of the movie, because I still remember the reaction to my friends and everyone else in the theater when I first saw this, where Scott is sent into the quantum realm to try to collect some healing particles for Ghost. Hope, Janet, and Hank are outside manning the controls, and just as Scott is about to get sucked back into the real world, communications get cut off, and we cut back to outside where the Van Dimes were turned into dust by Thanos, and Scott Lang stuck in the quantum realm. And that's the last we ever see of Scott Lang up until whatever happens in Endgame. Whichever way he gets out of the quantum realm, I'm excited to see. And this is actually a stinger that, if you're watching the series in chronological order, I'd actually watch this as part of Infinity War. Because Infinity War only has one stinger at the very end. No mid credit stinger. So this could act as the mid credit stinger for Infinity War more than Ant-Man and the Wasp. The end credit stinger is... Uh, it's not really worth it. If you've seen the trailers, you've seen the stinger. Basically, it just cuts to an empty room after the snap, and there's a giant ant playing drums. And that's it. I guess it's there to relieve tension, but right afterwards, you get the text saying, Ant-Man and the Wasp will return, and then a question mark pops up at the very end, as if there's a level of uncertainty what will happen to these characters. So yeah, not one of the better stingers, but still better than the end credit stinger in Thor The Dark World. And there you go, that's my recap for Ant-Man The Wasp. Now speaking of Thor, next up we're going to talk about the best Thor movie out there, Thor Ragnarok. And there's quite a handful of stuff in this movie that I didn't talk about in my original review or in my top 20 of 2017 list, and I feel ashamed for not talking about those moments. So yeah, check back soon where we're going to talk about Thor Ragnarok. First, I want to hear what you guys think about Ant-Man and the Wasp. When you first saw this movie, did you like it? Did you not like it? Has your opinion changed? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and of course leave a comment. Don't forget to support my Patreon page, follow me on social media, and until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.